so much. I, my name is DJ Cool. I work for Long Island 2.7 FM. I also have with me Elaine, who's in the house. She's known as Ghetto Stores. We have a bunch of celebrities and big details. And if you're a friend of Jamaica or a Jamaican, make some noise. Come on. Thank you. You know, today, Wayne Wilson is the man that put all of this together. I want us to stand and put our hands together for Mr. Wayne Lanson. Yeah. This event is called Jamaicans and Friends of Jamaica. It's a conference as we speak against corruption in Jamaica, of course, crime, which is a problem in Jamaica ever since I was a youth. Uh, we also have poverty, fair health care, poor education, and more. So right about now, we're going to ask the beautiful daughter of Wayne Lonesome to come forward. Please put your hands together for this beautiful young lady, the daughter of Wayne Lonesome. Uh, my name is Tanessa. For those of you who don't know my name. Um, so I would like to say it is my pleasure to welcome you all here today as we raise awareness to the corruption, crime, poverty, poor state of our sweet, sweet Jamaica. And I'd like you guys to take a moment to reflect on this question I'm about to ask. So, how much is too much? You know? Like, how much is too much? All right. <laughs> So, um, are you guys willing to sit aside in silence and watch your home be destroyed? No. Your culture dismantled? No. Or people dying at the hand of political misconduct? No. And no injustice? No. Okay. So, we, as members of the diaspora, will not be silent. We join here in unison to encourage others to speak up and let your voices be heard. Our end goal is to make Jamaica livable again, where people aren't afraid of moving back home, aren't discouraged from conducting profitable businesses within the country. The economy has to be restructured in order to give the sick and elderly the proper health care they deserve and to, pri to provide our youth with resources that will ultimately set them up for a productive and stable future. You like me, you know somebody young like me? Yeah, like you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our justice system must be mopped clean of well-dressed criminals that work with members of the political party and gang members to keep our country in a deplorable state. We have to clean it up. You know, like, in, in, in all ways, we have to clean it up. Yeah, like, we have to clean it up. And um, so, basically, what I'm trying to say is that we must go for the head first, right? Without the head, the body will not function. And we have to start this up. Right. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to say how we vote matters, right? We need a change. <laughs> Not team mackerel, you know? Yeah. Permanent change is what we're seeking with this movement. As you all know, the man is out of the wilderness tonight. <laughs> and that's not my word, it is. <laughs> okay, I hope everyone has had the pleasure of meeting my father, Wilson, the Radiant One of Red. And my dad, along with the diaspora staples, Dr. Rupert Francis, um, Mr. Atigan, Herb Nelson Jr., sorry, Mr. Um, Mystic Sensation, and uh, Carlos. I'm supposed to say sir. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so they all will be speaking tonight, but first, um, actually, I was supposed to do this introduction before the part, so. I'd like to hand over to the president. I apologize. I'm a summer tree and I. She's trying to do good, don't. Give it up for her. And 
Come here, let's take a free. Okay, if you're coming like your father, you can't free. You free? You free? All right. So, quick question. What is your hope for Jamaica as a young lady? Um, to be honest, I would just like to see um, like the betterment of the country. And I would like to know that the youth, because me, I think about myself, not like, I would like to see every younger person be able to get the opportunity to do better and not um, basically fall to the system, you know, the plural state. Um, it's not in a good condition, so I can't really blame them for some of the ways that they've turned to. So I'm hoping that we get the opportunity to um, be able to better ourselves. And for my family members and older people, I'd like for them to be able to have good health care, as you know, because because of negligence and poor everything in Jamaica, a lot of people aren't able to live long, healthy lives because they don't have the opportunity. So, yeah. Uh, give it a one more time. All right. So it's such a pleasure being here in Canada. And hey, listen, great story. I've been to Canada a couple of times. I've flown here uh, a couple of times, but I've driven here from Florida three times. I'm going to take oath for the third time and say, never again. But the first time I said, never again. And then she sweeped me up and rubbed my chin two times. And you want to listen to me? I sleep in a, in a car, pull over, rest stop, stop and I all the time. And then once I cross over, take, what is the name, the Queen and the Queen, Queen Elizabeth? Yeah, that one there, and try to come in. But listen to me, the second time I said, me now need to love now, money! I'm a fix. And she said, you know, that's so our partner driver, but because we said, take for that, come on! The third time now, no, that one there. And then, so I decided that, you know what, I'm going to take my vacation, drive into Canada. This wasn't for love, not money. This time it was for the scenic route. So me decided to not take 95, and I go over in Ohio and cut through some bush. When I go about, when I drive about 1,000 miles, I said, I'm a fool, eh? Got three times down there to this thing, and I promise you, that was the worst road trip I've ever had. Not because the company was bad, but just because it was so long. And, and I promise you, I said me now come back to Canada to love not money. But I'm here for country. I'm here for country. So, the love gone, the money spent, but the country, well, I'm here for country. So question, if you came to Canada for country, raise your hand. A lie. That's how much money can you get there? No man, stand up man. If you if you don't come from Canada, be like there for this. Stand up. Come on, show them some love, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know so some of you don't stand up on the nose on a take the train, take the bus. We take great on it. Hey, grey on, some people take train, some people take plane. What do you take? Boat? Yeah. You, you yeah. broke the land what? Uh -huh. Air Canada from Jamaica! Yeah. 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 Do we have anyone else here who came from Jamaica? No man, no. You, when you talk about commitment, maybe you make a phone call, Florida trip or something. But straight from the yard, straight from the yard, straight from the yard. Give it up for them. What do you say, Come on, do you say, Cool? No, yeah, one or two point seven, right? I mean, one or three point nine. No, this a year pro. All right. So we go do. We go so one quick prayer, prayer. I'm gonna make a warm up the crowd. Can we have a great distinguished panel? And that panel here? Yeah? yeah, listen to me. Is there people right or so? Yes. I always say this. I'm gonna mark this. Mark this on the head. 
every great moment in history start like this. A group of people who believed, a group of people who were determined, a group of people who wanted to make a change. So let me tell you this. When the memoirs and the books and the documentaries are being written, and I remember that part of the video here, yeah, when Mr. President said, listen, you were there. You were in the room when the people galvanized together and demanded change. So listen, me, now with my good, good time, come, off, come right us up from Florida, just to come now not to do. I'm doing this because I'm doing it as an investment. I'm doing this as a sacrifice for the country. I'm doing this because I believe that change happened with us. So I know you're believers. And I know you want to make a difference. And that is why we're all here. So listen. Let me start the thing right by opening in prayer. Join. Please stand. What I respect. And then my days, we can let it take off your heart too. I don't hear bush bush and ball and square like in some other way. <laughs> they still have to take off their heart. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus as we gather here today, we invoke the presence of the living God. Even as the anthem said, Eternal Father, bless our land. We've been praying that prayer to you from 1962. We've sung it, we've said it, we've written it. And each time we say we remember that it's only you, the Most High, Eternal Father, can really bless and turn around Jamaica. I hope we never forget that. It's not our political will, it's not our, our logic and our intelligence and our will for change that will do it, but it is you who makes the difference. So we invite your presence in these conversations and these social activities. Bless the speakers, bless Wayne, bless his house, and bless everyone who came from near and far so that we can be champions for change. We evoke your presence, and we say happy way today. And everybody say, yeah. Amen. Please be seated. Everybody, DJ Cool. Hold on then. Tracy, hold on, hold on. I know you talk about for driving from Florida. Yeah. I've done the trip. I've driven from Montreal to Florida, and I love it. I love it. Come on, show some love for this man who believes in God. And you know what? Every Jamaica have to believe in God. That's why we have that as our national anthem. If we're eternal father, bless our land. This is not a joke. From when I was a kid growing up, I remember seeing that in school, praying that. And believe it or not, here in Canada, they're trying to take prayers out of our schools. This is crazy. I've never seen anything like that. In Canada, we need to bring back prayers in our school. And we bring about that change too. Because like he said, it starts right here. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Wade Watson. Come on, stand up and see him a bit. This man, honestly, is one of the best. And I'm not joking. I've known him for years. And I'd like you to say a few words to these people because everybody that you see out here tonight, they came here because of the Almighty Father and because of you. You have to put this together. You know, get the stories is here. I'm going to talk to her a little later. She's going to come up and say a few words, but please say something to the people. Yeah, man, you know, they're going to get free. My wilderness! What do you say? Good day, yeah. Good day, yeah. Yeah, man. You know, we put the thing and pick it up because we have to make a change in the Jamaica. Can't help me. Yeah? Yeah, yeah man. And, you know, we have to step forward. You know, we can't just sit down and do music and then we have a government to mash up the place. And not care for poor people and then we can So I feel, you know, we have to get up and rise up and stand up and say enough is enough. Yeah? Health and your wealth and look for the health system in Jamaica is a failure. And we have the government to tell us, say, yo, come and invest. Diaspora, come down because it's sweet and we are so sweet. But what, 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 what did they sweet? Not what did they sweet. Yeah? They might invite people to come back to Jamaica. You just got old and you see it, you know. And if you go home, you go sick. Yes, sick. Can you imagine you're sick at 4 o'clock in the morning? Yes, sick. And you call, what, 109? Go on again. 
Uno no ha nada que hacer, tú tienes something que te get a poli, te get a police car. No come out in the back of the car. And when you reach the hospital, where you get? A wheelchair. And then all of a sudden, they're a wheelchair. And dead. So all of them are invited to come back to Jamaica when you know, say, you enter your way. Cardboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cardboard. Yeah? yeah? So that's why you see, you know, we're like a similar team, you know? The Titans and the, you know, yes, the Renegade, you know, Freddy Rebel, you know, Earth D, you know, the man in the Joker, right? Jamaican Carlos. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Francis. You know, we're doing it, you know? And we start to wreck the government. Why not them? Why not them friends, you know? Because about uh, two weeks ago, Rati, you see Dr. Um, Christopher Tufton called me and I said, yeah, but we want to come up on the program, you know. And he's brave. He, he, don't you be brave? Yeah, man, he come on, but he want me to come to spread a little propaganda. I feel him can't go around the man and the wilderness. Remember, none of them can't go around me, you know. You don't know that, right? Yeah, man, he can't go around the man and the wilderness. So when he come on, he buck and he try to shift. The first thing I play, I play that video. This video. We want to play it too, you know. We want to play it because it's really touching. Make a play it. What else play it? What else? There is video of Vita Henry drawing his last few breaths on this earth last Thursday. It still haunts his family and friends. Stress, tired, disappointed, frustrated. Just a few of the um, adjectives used to describe the way I'm feeling present. This and the disturbing news, the know, the learn, the distress that my father went through at the line of the hospital. He just went here just to get um, assistance. I mean, that facility is here to assist you on the way you are. The sick, they go to the hospital for treatment, right? They go to the hospital, you're expected to come out but better than do where you went here. The dead man's loved ones said the brutal irony is that Mr. Henry, as an active member of the Community Citizens Association, lobbied political representatives to supply medializers to public health facilities in Clarendon. But on the night in question, he himself could not get one of those very machines as his asthma condition worsened. You know, the man would come here and beg the police, saying that I think they get a pool for the line from us to that. And when you hear, sir, I eat him go for your use, and, and he's had some negligence, and he not get through, and he died, and he not really had it. The assistant here to get the food cut up by this. He was a champion for the community, a voice for the community. He was never afraid to stand up and defend what he thought was right for the community. The leadership of the hospital, when contacted, explained a meeting was planned at which time they would get a brief on the case. <coughs> the son of the deceased wants the authorities to use the case to again look into the practices at public hospitals. I'm just using this medium to reach out to the general public, relevant authorities, everyone to take a deep look into this and see how our people, our citizens, are being treated, treated at these facilities. I mean, if somebody dies on a floor, that is blatant negligence. But what about the alleged threats coming from some elements of the community since the incident? I'm sure no one was threatened. None of us threatened anyone. The media keep broadcasting that, um, saying that the nurses and staff are afraid to go to work because they're fearful for their life to have been threatened. I can guarantee that all of that are just lies. They are just spotting the media, feeding stories to the public just to provide and hide behind all right, so you see when I play this to Christopher Tuftan, you know when asked me, say, you remember what thing? When we get it. No, no, when it happened. When it happened. You are the, you are the end minister of Jamaica. I get too much media. But you asked me when this happened. So me to tell you when this happened. Remember the fan team watching? It's on his watch, right? And then I play an next video because tell me what. If they want to come ask him about some incubator. Incubator, right? When they want to ask him? Some ventilator. Some ventilator, they want to come ask him about. But when they never ask him about that, I mean, I've come that video where he thinks they never ask him about maybe the rats in the 
in the hospital. If, you know, if you ask about that, that you know when you are sick to me, you know when you are sick to me, Missy, you know, say, but when you are sick to me, you know, so we get together and we are going to do a chapel, you know, because I'm like, so I'm going to go on with this and I don't know. So I'm going to show this. If you couldn't go on it, because I'm going to pay you on it, you know, go on, so you know, you know, right? So you know that, right? I'm going to show my next video. Because I'm going to show you, then by now, your health is your wealth. Yeah? And if you have a health in nature, you have a wealth in nature. Right? It's a sin. It's a sin. 700 billion dollars. Yeah? And cannot count for. Cannot count for. Yeah? You know where it can. I know the thing about you with a girl on, girl on. You can't see it no more. Our people are feeling it. You see when them, you see when them sick? You know where they go? Miami. They have the money in Miami in this place. We can't sit down no more and watch them and do our people them like this. It's wrong. You understand? It's wrong. And this and this don't have no feel no politics and you know, because you have some people because they might get a little. You know when they get a little and out and something they pick up the party and all that. You know that, you know. Family are crushed our people because I really get her, you know. Yeah, cross me. And it's wrong. This one. Me show my next video because you know when, when I want to ask him, he might ask the way they show him this other one. Let's show you the other one on this way. Can we put in the article chop in? We'll put in the article chop. So let's show you this other one. I'll show you the other one. Right, this one. When you want to look at the scripture, you can Yes, hold on, hold on. Let me take it. Look at the other one now. I'm going to show you the other one now because. In one, I can never, I never know one that I know. I might cook it This one, look at this. It's like a and people are dying. Yeah. 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 We shall come back by 10.30. We shall we need to get back to you. When I went back to hospital, to talk to the family, all right, how are we going to transport them? Can we get a day with any factor? We shall ask the procedure. Mom, we are trying to work out where to move, but there is no ambulance again. At some, we are trying to get an ambulance from home to the bill. We shall tell you to pay for private. Back to SDC, one family. If you need to pay for private, no nurse will want to go. It's about to be serious. Before we clear up. Before we clear up. Monday night, when we went to look for my mother, the master said, I'm going to start talking to my mother. You know what I said, Miss? Ah, we're going to pull two left. Two eye mother two left. It's a good thing. Two left. We bought a week supply for her to buy a place, right? Please get more pill. It's all the things that we have to do. We said the pill can't last. We said it's all the time the pill. The last time I put my heart to me, I'm going to kill it. It's all the things that we said the pill last. It's all the search. I gave the nurse the pill for one week's supply. Here before I was 60 milligrams. You remember that pill? That would be a 95 dollars for us. Then I said, all right, you got to say, you got to investigate what I'm going to do to describe the person. Then I said, call the nurse's supervisor officer and report the case that the case is lost. Or, in this case, sold. Or, thief. Then I call the nurse's supervisor office at Falmouth Hospital. About 8.30 at night. Because after we took our time, they said, you only have two pills. And two pills is one dose because one of the pills is 30 milligrams. So that means that if it's every four hours, I know, I mean, she would miss at least three doses over the course of the night. And they are already there. You understand? She would miss three doses. We said, no, this is the compact words. We said, no. We said, it's too much. This is too much in the family now. This is too much. Anyhow, the family likes to have a protocol. We call the nurses' quarters and we put the spirit on. Ma, you call at a back time and say, excuse me. I said, I'm going to go to the I said, I'm telling you that hospital couldn't provide the pill to keep them out. At first, we bought it for 95 dollars now. Give it to the hospital. The hospital lost it. And we are reporting that you have to send the call at that time. In Jamaica. Well, I heard 
We will both provide the field at least get the night supply until it's certain time. We will miss them, sorry. We can't do nothing about that. We have to come back in the morning. Can you see what all this? So, of course, you know, we have to go back and ask for that one day. And I have to video and come and release the video. Let me talk to the nurse. You understand? So, this is all this is all this is all this then you know who put in the don't you have a pill tray to put pill for that pill to get to see that family member? Eh? Miss, you know, you know, so what about tonight? You don't know. They treat people like, like garbage at Father Hospital and the whole medical system. You understand? They treat them to keep some. So that the ambulance is taking to keep some. So that the ambulance is taking to keep at Gui Hospital, Gui Tiana Deli. They said, when they have you talking about We said, suck them on inside the field. You will tell them to understand. The doctor is up here, the team, the new surgeon team. They can't understand. All they have are so long, and they have shipped her out. They can't understand. When she returned home, they should be too late. They might have long star collapse, or hard star collapse. They might have dead. They might have dead.
since they are seated in order, I'll just flow from the opposite end. May I get this microphone, sir? Thank you. First and foremost, I would like to have all our panelists just greet you and just one brief statement or just one sentence greeting. And then later on, once we start delving into some issues, you, they'll have an opportunity to expound and share their opinion. All right, so first and foremost, the man who wrote that infamous letter, Dr. Rupert A. Francis. Good evening, good evening. And, and panelists, you, can, you may remain seated for your Good evening, day. thank you, Mr. President. You know I don't want to stand up anyway. Uh, I just want to stand up for Jamaica. Uh, yes, we are standing up for Jamaica. You know, I want to tell you, I love Canada. I don't care what anybody says. I came here as a soldier, and we have some soldiers down there in um, Toronto. Uh, the land is them. They're all my, I taught them. I was their captain. Um, I also went to Petawawa and trained in Petawawa uh, in the middle of the winter. Can you imagine a black man in the winter? I was the only thing that was black on the snow. But I just came in here this evening and I see a man in a green shirt, so I must be a labor right, right? No, I, I only said that because somebody came up to me and said, you're, you're the man who was in the labor party. Yes, I served the labor party for 45 years. But the point I'm making is this, that it is not about politics. This is about Jamaica. And you say and you sing the national anthem, you eat the food, you do everything that's Jamaican, you talk Jamaican, you can't even hide it. So why must we allow people to take us the fools? We are not fools, we are very smart people. We run faster, everything, and I'm here tonight to say that this is our land. This is our land that we have to pass on to the next generation, and we must preserve it. And that's why we are here this evening. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to say these few words at the moment to you. And you don't have to call me any names. I know all my names. Thank you very much. One love, one heart, one destiny. All right. Dr. Rupert A. Francis. Now, beside him is another almost handsome guy, nearly handsome guy, but he's strong. So, we gotta give him his props. This guy names, um, rhymes with one of my favorite person of all time, with his Nisha, JC. Who's that? Jesus Christ, JC. But I found out it's not the JC where I like him. But he loved Jamaica so much, he take on the name Jamaica for himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica, Carlos. Yes. Good evening, everybody. My eyes and respect, everybody else. No, we're glad to see you. We're glad to see you. This is a sacrifice, and like President said, this is an investment. Think about it. Some of you might not be around when change comes that we are seeking. The change that we are fighting for right now might be for a grand picnic then. Yes, you, re you realize that? Yes, Just like the whole so now behind the money I see it right now. Something grand picnic and like energy, you know? Yes. So consider this. It's an investment in our country. And I'm very proud to be here. Trust me, that's too cross and the river to come in. Let me put a side back on, man. Trust me. So I'm so glad to be here and I'm glad everybody come out. We can enthuse and uh, we're ready. And uh, Mr. Celsius and Dr. Francis and Will Rattigan and Will Lonesome and Aromatic, anyway, there. Go and see us, and I'll see you. Jeff Tavares, I love you, see you. No, no matter what you think about me, I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> Go and see you, Jeffrey. So, people are actually better um, at the quality. Because people watch our road, you know. And Jamaica, they said, this is our moment. Big up everybody, I watch from Jamaica. From all the countries around the world, Jamaican people and Jamaican lovers, they are saying that this is our moment. They want to hear everything clear. They want to see clear. This is our moment. Hip 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 hip. Hip 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 hip. What we want? What we want? When we need it? Now. When we need it? Now. In a song that can already. What we want? 
inside, Anne Marie. Ladies and gentlemen, our fearless leader. Now, if we in Lonesome is the renegade and afraid, we're coming to that. Talk about the rat wire. There's only one man why these government officials don't sleep well at night and have heartburn. Any, anything else in them, they will scratch them in and figure out. But once a minute, you know, they, they send some kind of shiver up their spine. Ladies and gentlemen, the fearless leader himself, none other than Wilfred Rattiga. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, let me say, um, it's my pleasure and privilege to be here with you. I'm truly humbled by the warm embrace and reception I received. Now, if you would ask me, well, first of all, let me just say thanks to my mother wilderness and all the panelists here, and to you for showing up tonight. It's good to be back in Canada. My last time here was in 1998. <laughs> and why am I here? I'm not here because of position. I'm not seeking position. I'm not seeking power. I'm not seeking status. I've retired from the FBI. I'm a practicing attorney. I don't need this. I have to do this. Because when I look back and I look at what's going on in Jamaica, it's a goddamn disgrace. And we have people there who are so-called educated, so-called qualified. But then when I look at some of the things that this group has done, especially Herb, and he probably won't talk about it tonight, but he's done some deep diving on some of these crooked politicians. And when you look at some of the things, the, you start saying to yourself, how much money do you really need in this life? How much? And it reminds me of a case when I was the number two person in charge of the FBI office in Mississippi. Um, there's a gentleman who was on trial. And I remember the, a billionaire, and I remember the judge said to him, greed is like salt water. The more you drink of it, the thirstier you get. And that's what's going on in Jamaica. Greed. It's not because they need the money. They don't need it. You know who need it? The people of Jamaica, the poor people. And so we need to be the voice for the voiceless. We need to be the voice for the people who are marginalized, the people nobody no care about because them can't speak for themselves. And you see what happened recently? People can't talk anymore. Because the people are being tracked and people are being traced. And people are being threatened. But up your soul, we don't know fear. We don't know fear. And so I want to thank all of you for believing in us. I want to thank all of you for the support you have provided us. And I ask you to continue. Because together, we will rise. Together, the change will come. Thank you. All right. We're going to skip over Wayne. We're going to go to Herb. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our intelligent analyst. This man is the kind of guy. Uh, we have children in the room? Okay, I was going to say him get a hard on and, and intelligent. I, but I can't say that. I can't say that with the children. But this guy, whenever you think about anything intelligent, it gets his juices flowing. And let me tell you this, you just want to say anything that has to do with law enforcement or intelligence. Herb would be like 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning blasting off documents and research. This man take corruption seriously. And he has spent his life. And you're going to see this man's life work will show you and prove to you that he's fighting for you. And he's going up against the people who believe they can pull a wool over their eye. And no. There might have been corruption happening for years, but with the tools we have today, the tools at Herb's disposal, and a lot more people out there who are deep diving, they are uncovering things that traditionally you wouldn't be able to uncover to realize how corrupt some of these elected officials are. Ladies and gentlemen, the man with the plan, Mr. Herb Nelson, Jr. Greetings, everybody. I know I came to every table this evening. If I missed you, hopefully we can get a picture together if you're just coming in. 
So I'd like to say something about patriots because that's exactly what you are, not the kind of patriots you see in some places that swear to kill people and do things that only their race can enjoy. What's Jamaica's motto? I can't hear that because- Out it, of many. Okay, out of many one people, all right? Patriots who desire better country discuss and share concerns about the nation's current state and future direction. That does sound familiar? Come on, guys. Yes. Organize and mobilize efforts to bring about positive change. That's what we're doing right now. Advocate for policies and reforms that benefit the country and its citizens. Support and encourage leaders and initiatives that align with their vision for a better country. Yes. Engage in community service and volunteer work to address local issues and improve the quality of life. Yes. Educate and raise awareness about important issues and promote civic engagement. Build a sense of community and solidarity among like-minded individuals. Yeah. And develop and implement solutions to address social, economic, and political challenges. Yeah. Now, if, if you have not been engaging in that, they say by gathering, country patriots can pool their resources expertise and passion to drive meaningful change and create a better future for their country. Yes. Now, when I'm there at three or four in the morning and there are people just pinging away on my computer, right? They're asking questions. And it's as if I'm trying to answer their questions without giving away too much, right? You'll have people ask me simple questions like, was this guy really born in Great Britain? And do you ha are, are, are they serious about what they're saying? And then I have to look at the Constitution and I have to say, no, they're not serious about what they're saying. Whether they're born in Great Britain or any other commonwealth country, they have a right to run for office and to occupy office in any commonwealth country, basically. That includes Jamaica, right? So when the pressure hit the prime minister, he brought up something that was supposed to be privileged information. And privileged information simply means if your information here at the Social Security Office in Canada gets disclosed by a government minister, then I believe you have the right to sue that government minister for how many disclosures that occurred. So you can't go into somebody's personal records look at their passport and tell the country, this guy has a different passport. Especially if it's a UK passport. Yeah. Are Canadians UK citizens? They're not UK citizens necessarily unless they were registered in the UK are registered at the embassy here. But all Canadians are what? Commonwealth citizens, just like Jamaicans. And if they go and they live in Jamaica for a year, they can run for what? Office, right? It's that simple. So the prime minister started a fire that he believed would have engulfed the opposition leader. 
And all it did was come back and burn him on the ass. Because it was just simple shenanigans he was utilizing to get people to stop talking about what? Corruption. His failure to file. All right. All right. All right. Give it up for Herb Nelson, everybody. All right. Pass it back to Wynn. No. Earlier, I mentioned Dr. Rupert wrote, writing a letter. But there was a man who filed a lawsuit. No, 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 who that man is. Anybody know who that man is? There was a man who got sick and tired of talking and said, Nadine Sutherland sing one song. And what the song say? Action. Not a bag of mouth. No, so this man decides, say, no, me need not a bag of talking. You know what we're going to do? We're going to take the fight to them. And this fire started right here with that almost handsome guy. I remember me and most handsome. Keep that in mind. Uh, we established that, right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the renegade himself, he penned a lawsuit and took the fight to them. And that set off a fire right now. That's why we had the letter. That's why we have Ratty. That's why we have Mystic. That's why we have Carlos. But I mean, the president been around a long time. We just don't know about me coming out upon social media. But nonetheless, me the it, you know. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I want to reintroduce to us our host and the renegade. He's setting the pace. We have laid out a dossier of videos because we want to be a little bit interactive. And let me apologize to those who are watching the stream. I understand that the audio is not the best quality. Do. Turn it up a little bit and cock your ears because you will be informed and you will be empowered. So we apologize to anyone out there that's watching the stream and encountering any kind of challenge. Later on, thanks to Wayne, we also will have good audio quality because we're professionally recording this. So later on, you'll get a higher quality and he obviously will repost and restream. But for you, are, you who are here, we're going to make a difference tonight. So one more time without any further ado, I want to big up Mr. Cole, but we are bringing back the renegade as we take this fight and fight on for the people. Yes, man, the renegade, we're not afraid, you know. Yes. Let me tell you something, man. Um, Jamaica Constable of Force now. That one that hurt me in Arati. Yeah, because when you take, when you take, I mean, I even know if I, you know, call, me call him Sir Googs. You know, Google Gaga, right? Sir Googs. Because he was no police, you know. He was no police. And we see it from afar. Because when a prime minister take a, a military guy and, and turn him down personal advisor, that, that's, you know, that, that, one, that, 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 that one of the lowest point, you know. Not true. Yes. And then, you know, him saying, no, we want him to turn a commissioner. The first, the first advisor that to the prime minister in the history of Jamaica, you know. The first, you know. Security advisor, when him have a security minister. Never make no sense. It make any sense? No. So you pay him over, what, 10 million at the time? And then you, 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 you double up in money. For not not all that man there, him dumb as him dumb than a rock. Because if you talk to a rock, you remember if you say, yo, you hear it echo like it echo now, you know, it bongs and it echo upon you. If you say, yo, to Google, <laughs> acid, straight acid, straight acid. So, you know, we get fed up by him now and, and the pay stupidness. So we have to do a lawsuit him because he have to move. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. We have to last suit him. We have, to, we, have to, we have to move him. Yeah? Yeah, man, because we couldn't take it no more. We see my all talk to Miss Kitty one at the time, and I said, ah, oh, man. Let, you know, I'm a said, real said. I, I leave my commit. What I'm saying? I, I'm not wearing my commissioner hat. No, your commissioner right you from your commissioner until you leave the post. You understand? And that people like them, they know, you know, the government have... And I put in a, you know, I move the qualified people them. And I put some lackeys and yes man. And, and that bad. 
So we have to get up and we have to burn out the whole of these kind of things. It can't work no more. We're tired of that now, we know. We're tired of that. Because that can't move the country. And now move the country forward. And them now have the masses in art. Them now have the masses in art. So we have to lawsuit. Right now, Google run up and down, you know. Because Google, Google, I'm glad to say I'm run gone, you know. I mean, yeah, them drop the code for Ratty. Because Ratty do the second lawsuit, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry, finally, because I'm say, boy, well, no, man, man, no, will not say, you file that one. I forgot, no, I forgot not that one because she had that story, you know. I want to know who that. Yes. I want to. And, and the third one too. But when him when him not the second one, them say him now him not not standing. We up here we not not standing. He said you not not standing, right, Ratty? You right. not not standing. And then me here when Google I leave now, them I drop the career. I say, um, Google himself. Can me have it here, you know? Me have it. Me like play them thing there, you know, because you know we like old people to account. Google say no. Them not fi you know draft you know body outside now for turn the commissioner. Them have you know police them with qualification there. We can't manage the country. No. I'll be a yes man and I'll be a lackeys and wimps around the Jamaica constabulary force. That's why them trouble Ruan James. And that bad. That bad. We should have stand up for Ruan James. Good police. But them play politics with the police. They don't play politics. What we want or we want a government for, you know, you leave the police force alone. Police for the policing. Police that they serve, protect, and reassure the citizens of the country. Not for work, for no government. Like them, you, you know, you are doing things to them and they allow the, the people them and attack them. It, it, it definitely needs to stop. It needs to stop. Tonight, enough thing we're going to talk to you, you know. So we're going to just take time and go back across to President to DJ Cool. Yes. Yes. And then, you know, you know they want to ask some questions to you, you know, because. You know, when, when, we, when we head get at run here, so tonight, I worries, because they must sit down and watch, you know. And they must watch this. So we are sending a message to them same way. We are going to continue to hold them accountable. And we want some people to start going to prison, by the way, you know. Yeah, we want some people to go to prison. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Some people have to start going to prison. Tell me something. In a full lifetime, from when you know yourself, from when you born till now, when you know yourself. Would you ever see anybody from the PSOJ ever go to prison yet? I even get charged. But you still have the biggest cook in Jamaica, you know? Yeah. Would you know that? Would you know about the cook port? Tell me which ghetto youth could have fined 25 million US and nearly 3 pints and nearly 4 billion Jamaican like up at the cook port. Which Jamaican, which local Jamaican youth? I know Jamaican youth that, that do that. And then them find the next 80 million dollar worth. That's around 16 billion. 12, no, that's a 12 billion. That a, it are equal 16 billion in all. Them find, right? So the, just the coke port and dung a half. That don't look like ghetto youth sitting that. Don't fix Bailey. You hear me call the name? Fix Bailey. Can fix the things them, you know. That guy is not a police that they need to move. Yes. He watch the street. Right? Fix Bailey, fix up the thing and him come out. Remember this at 2022 when him up at the court port, right? And him come out last year, March, and say, oh, we just assign a paper and we soon, you know, we're going to make an arrest. Who not say anybody get arrested or no? Why can't the government this? We need real government. No, man, we really need, we need some real government, man, and the real things, no, man. We're tired of this, no, man. And the PSOJ behind this, because them love when them have a government where it's yo yo. Yes. You understand? So that that that's how the PS, PSOJ love set. Them like yo yo. Where them can use and you know, them pay less taxes and you have some big guys there with some bank where them close them draw out and look at money and close their account. That bad too, you know. Yeah. Most poor people don't have an account. SSL is the next one again. I know them not touch all the guy, you know. You know what them do? You remember what them do? Them run out to that woman named Jean Panton. Me had the own the man and say, yo, me not show the woman her face because she can't move them money there. 31 million US. Oh, she if you move that? And touch the SWIFT system. You never hear about the SWIFT system? If you touch that, Amer believe me, America come for you, you know. She couldn't take out the money there. Remember, you have to transfer the money. And by the way, SSL is not a bank. Ain't a bank. Yeah? 
and then blame that poor little woman. And then you have, you have something named, you know, more peace with the AKA Big Mama. <laughs> Big Mama. Yes. Yeah, all him do is just play politics. We're not playing the politics around here. You understand? We are talking about Jamaica. And we have to clean Jamaica. Yes. And we're not joke with them. So that, that's what I said tonight. We're going to talk about a lot of things, you know. A lot of things. Because you, you understand? We're going to talk about a lot of things, man. But we're going to move on. We're going to continue to move on. Yes, man. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, so here's the deal. So you may ask yourself the question. All right. What can I do being here tonight? Remember, it really come down to action. Wrong or right? Because if you come here, we gather, we talk, we express our frustration. That's one thing. But the true question really is this. How do we use our presence here to make an impact and bring the quantifiable results of change that we're looking for? That's really the question. What does your presence here mean to the future of Jamaica? Well, I'm glad you asked, labor right man. I mean, green shirt man. <laughs> I'm for trouble. I had to do it. Dr. Francis did it. So I have to take a swipe off him. But listen, this is non-political, by the way. I know my friend I wear a PMP shirt and she boasts with it. The PMP hat there at to you. Hey, hey, a PMP table. This is that boss a green balloon. Me, who that boss a green balloon there? You know me that was a green balloon if I was sitting at this table? Because she's an orange shirt, orange. And my girl, make sure she put her orange in it, but you mix up the green, you're confusing. Which I choose a side, man. Anyway, but we're, we're on the side of Jamaica. It doesn't matter which party, we're all on the side of Jamaica and the future of Jamaica. So here are your leaders. Here are the people with the vision that you have listened to. You have vetted all of them. You have watched them work, and you know exactly what their heart and what their position is. But my question for you is a very simple one. How does your presence here make the ball move towards the goal? How can you help? The first thing I'm telling you is that, and, and not all of us, have a law degree like Wilfred Rattigan. Not all of us have the military background like Dr. Rupert. Not all of us have the IT and intelligence analysis like um, uh, my good friend Herb. And not all of us have platforms like Wayne and Mystic and Carlos that they can get the word out. But let me say this to you. You are really the people that will put these guys to work. And we need to put them to work. We started a fund, the OJLDF fund, and that helps the work to go on. Because every time you file a lawsuit, it's money. Every time you're doing some research, it's money. Every time you have to go somewhere to visit and have a meeting, it's cost. And we're asking you to be a part of that. That's the first thing. And the next thing. John Ratty and want to file, learn how to file ATIs. He's been begging you, learn how to file ATI. What do you mean by what is ATI? What is ATI? Access to what? And how for phone that? And she sit down there now. That means I'm good. Yo, if I'm me, my, my president does wallah and she does hook. She couldn't even hear her phone. She couldn't even hear her phone. Hey, Mr. Cole, come on, come on, come on, DJ Cole. Yo. Why? Eh. I think she was enjoying his speech, you know. Straight Mr. up. Mr. Were you enjoying him? More Were you enjoying enjoy. what he was saying? I think what so. What else? <laughs> and the tune I beat to, you know. I want to have my favorite song, you know. And she didn't answer the phone, you know. I she hope you notice. Phone. She's not distracted. She, she, didn't, she didn't care about the poor. You know what that said to me? Yeah. She's about the people's business. Yes. She's Come on. The Show it for business. this beautiful lady. Everything else is secondary to her. And you. Because look here. Look how we did late today. And some of them never vex and go. Okay, yeah, some people that kiss and teeth and say, oh, I'm going to like the Jamaican because they're not no time. And some people that do that, you know. 
You know, so some people face it like that and then I understand so sometimes there are reasons behind your control why there's a delay. You know, so some people, they just love cuss and love call their fellow Jamaicans and professionals. You know, some people say so though. Yes. Oh, you mean by the, the girl beside you, they say so. Me true, me can. But we not call no foul. Did I call foul? No, sir? no, no. Who the cap fit? Let them wear it. <laughs> Send the man who wearing a cap. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously though, some people that cuss and go on and vex and go on and say, yo, that's something I do, 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 do. But you know what you guys did? You patiently fellowship and connect with people and meet because you guys know it's bigger than the moment. It's just bigger than just any kind of temporary setback. And we have great things we're going to be covering tonight. But I want your participation. This is an open forum. And this is going to be your time to express yourself. So let me say this to you guys. Please. I have one thing I have to say. Yes. And I stand the risk of isolating some people who are very partisan. But I want you to keep in mind. It is not very professional and patriotic to do a medo. Call the Honorable Prime Minister conjure wholeness. Don't do it. <laughs> it no look good, it no sound good, Philip, and the big, big Honorable Prime Minister and go call him Kanjo. No, let me say this. If me do it, No. No. Let me say this. <laughs> it is not pit. <laughs> so, so, hold on. So, so listen to me again. I can do it and get away with it. We say, if I can do it, you can do better. You can do better than me. <laughs> what do you call the honorable, the, well, this honorable country wellness? To be honest with you, I believe if somebody has a job to do and they're not doing it, you have a right to say how you feel. All right. No, do hold I, on, do hold you on. agree no, with no, me? And the audience time it. And the audience time it. And the audience time it. And for them time it. And the audience time it. Hold on. Let me say this again. And in all seriousness, though. All right. The thing about it is this, the Prime Minister is in an office, and, and I'm dead serious now, is in an office, and we don't like where I do. We believe that they're corrupt and they're not following the laws, that they are, they are sworn to uphold. Wrong or right? We all agree with that. Yeah. But here's the deal. Speaking disparagingly and using all kind of disparaging terms and, yeah. and pejorative terms, meaning say as a face things, call him all kind of name. That doesn't solve the problem. So what I want us to focus on tonight, instead of focusing on the nicknames and the kanjo, when me do, no, 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 follow me. I can be rude. Am I ready, you know? So don't follow me, do. Do what me say, but not do what me do. <laughs> so we want to keep it civil. That may I say. So tonight in the conversation, let us know one thing. No matter how you take it, if Jamaica is called upon to be represented around the globe, there's nobody else. The world is looking to but him. So whether you like him or not, whether you like his policy, whether you like his, his performance, that's another story. But here's the deal. We are going to be above that. Because guess what? If you have another prime minister come in, and if many of us are hoping that Mark will step in, we would want the same respect be yeah. offered to him in the same way from the opposition. Wrong or right? Fear Absolutely. of fear. Fear of fear, and we can't be hypocritical and partisan. Can we accuse people say them partisan? And then we know what's other than them. Don't do that. Don't do that. You see, righteousness cut right across the board. Righteousness are just righteousness. And you can't take side. You have to cut straight. So tonight, in your deliberation, in your discourse, while you're talking, keep in mind, he's the, lead, he's the representative of our country, and, and we're going to vote him out, as, as many of you will. But here's the deal. But we need to also make sure that when we're speaking, people don't get sidetracked by the pejorative terms or the negative things that we are say about the person, but we focus on the performance, right? Because the performance is the issue. So I don't want you nobody call him sweet pepper nose. I'm going to be alone. 
Nobody not say sweet pepper knows but me. If any of them say sweet pepper knows, me come here see it and shake your hand. No, no, me come here see it and say stop it. Do not do that. DJ Cool, make your bad so. Well, boss, you hear me now? As a Jamaican, we're born in Jamaica and grew up in a Jamaica and love Jamaica to the max. I believe everybody that's here tonight should remember say a Jamaica first. Bottom line. It no matter whether you're PNP or JLP, we believe in Jamaica first. And if you're here and you take side, we know of that. We want people to put Jamaica first. Because when we say eternal father, bless our land, it no means we want God for bless certain people and leave out certain people. And you're right about what you said. The respect is due. Because when it comes to representing us, we still have to show our support behind somebody, whether or not we like what I must say, but we still have to show them support. It's like the Trudeau guy in Canada right now. I would people not like him either. But out of respect, we still have to realize say, anything, I him I represent us. So, good point. And it's just protocol, all right? Yeah. So, tonight is going to be great. So, we're going to turn back over to our panelists, and they're the star of the show tonight. Now, we have a dossier video, as I mentioned, that we're going to be looking at. Because the thing about it, we have brought the evidence. And we need your support to galvanize the actions that's going to come. The report that Herb has been pulling. The ATIs that Ratty has been pulling. All of this comes back to you and how you respond to the whole thing. So we're going to do the thing right tonight. Wrong or right? And we're you know Jamaican. something? We're Jamaican. We're doing the right thing. You know, as Jamaican, we have to be diplomatic. Sometimes we might not like Wagwan, but we have to be diplomatic about it. That's what I want people to do. Just be diplomatic. Because we not agree with a lot of stuff. The poverty, the corruption, the health care, and all them things. Eh? But if we try to use brute force and ignorance, we're not going to achieve what we want to achieve. We have to be very diplomatic about it. My Straight therapist up. told me once, it said, it said, Lincoln, that's President Lincoln, focus on the problem, not the person. Come here, I will say, you always make me do this. Yeah. You always make me do that. How you make me do it. Anybody ever said that about your lover yet? Say, if they, if they never rub it around where you wouldn't cuss them out. And my therapist said, focus on the problem, yeah. not the person. person. So we know the performance problem, the person I do. But let's focus on the problem and the performance and leave the pejorative term about the persons. All right? I just want to mention that as we move on with the program. Thank you so much for coming. Food still running back. Juice running back. And this is going to be a wonderful evening. When we're done, we're going to play some music. And we have a, a dance-off competition to, to the best skanker. Right? And then that person... Well, hold on. Let me not reveal that yet. But listen to me. Let's get business out the way. Let's get the well, countries out the way. We'll get some money. We'll get some dollars to the winner. Yeah, but I did not know yet. Oh, them them all right. All right. Only the faithful, you know. Only the faithful way not get the money. Because you yeah, have some people that as soon as you hear the start yarn. So it's like when I want to love with a bit and say, now nah, I'm going to be at 9 o'clock. And I don't know thing this is not because later on when the dancing start, more of it's when I drop legs too. Hey, wait, what I, time I, are we going till tonight? So more, what time are we going till tonight? Yourself. Two right. o'clock. We're here so, till two. So right. remember that. Two o'clock. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to swing it back. To win, he's going to play. He's, gonna, he's about to play another video. And Wayne, if you could just give us an introduction to where we're going so the, the audience will know the conversation. All right. Well, remember this video? Look at this. Hear this, hear this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So these are the promises in a 2015, you know, the then opposition leader make to Jamaica, right? Watch this promise. And one, one of the watch it, tell me how much of them in fulfill today, right now. Eight years plus. Okay? Watch this. <laughs>
dot that up has a timeline of two years and six months with key performance targets which are agreed upon by the cabinet focus on two things economic growth and job creation. I'm told you need a new way Promises, right? Zero. Zero. In talk about in, in, in questionable, in questionable integrity and the statutory declaration that they clear from 2021 or now. Eh? Three years. Remember 2021 plus year one for 2022, two years plus 2023. Okay. So three different ones. That, them that they clear. And a one, you know. Three. And it's so hard for you as a prime minister of a country. No moral authority to talk to nobody at all. Eh? This bad. If some other country, you know, say, they've got to step down, you know, say, some people end up in prison, don't it? Right? We have to discuss this. Ratty. I don't know where to start. <laughs> Let me just say that most of you, I suspect, you're seeing this video like this is like the, the hundredth time you're seeing it. And there's a reason, it's called reinforcement, because there's something called the nine day wonder, where you hear something in a Jamaica and after nine days it's forgotten. We are not letting them forget all of these promises. We won't. No, it's been said that the man or the woman who doesn't read has no advantage over the man or woman who cannot read. So it's incumbent upon all of you to read, to understand. And that's one of the reasons why we're here. We're trying to make you critical thinkers. Because sometimes we hear things and we don't vet them. And they come second hand, third hand, fourth hand. Now here's what happened, what's interesting about all of these promises. They start out with all of these promises to do what? To get votes. Simple. And after the election, they realize that Jamaican people, they're not really focused on these issues. They're focused more on bread and butter issues. When I go eat, when I send a picnic go to school, when I pay rent, light bill, water bill, transportation, they care more about that. So they give you this, and people don't understand how significant these things are. These promises are extremely significant. Now, here's what the Prime Minister did. This is 2015. Did he enact legislation for any of this? No. And by the way, before I go any further, I'm going to big up the lady with the phone. You know, she doesn't want me to call for her, but the lady with the phone, right? That's a lies. I'm from 1977, I know CR. Tonight, I'm the first, I see her from 1977. We grew up not to see him, see him yard, a water house. Big up yourself, lies. Yeah. So, what him do? Him can't pass it, so him come up with something called the Constitutional Reform Commission. And him say, make them take care of it. I don't have to deal with it. And what them do? Them still don't include some of them things in the, in the, in the, um, the recommendations what they make. And that's why people, it's so important that you know, read them things. And if you don't understand, 
you have a wealth of knowledge up here. But keep in mind that knowledge is a two-way street. Because we are going to make mistakes sometimes now. We are going to make mistakes sometimes. And that's one of the most, that's one of the most, that's one of the most ugliest things about this government is that I have yet to hear one, a major politician in Jamaica, major or minor, come out and say, that which I did was wrong. I made a mistake. I'm asking for your forgiveness. I'm asking you for your continued support. They not do nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. And so it is up to us to point out the wrongs and to keep it current and to make it become a nine-day wonder. And that's why somebody, the president mentioned about ATI. People, we'll talk about it later, but you need to get involved with filing ATIs because a lot of the information that I've imparted to you I got it from the government itself. I mean, I have to pull some teeth sometime and kick out some teeth, but I get the information so I can share it with you. Because otherwise, you would never know some of these things going on. Give you one example, and I'll pass the mic on to Mystic Sensation. I asked him a question about the Vibes Cartel case. I said, I want to know how much taxpayers' dollars the government spent on the Vibes Cartel case from beginning to the Privy Council and also where it is now in the Court of Appeal. They wrote me back and they said, we spent 33 million Jamaican dollars to hire a British firm. Now keep in mind, we have somebody called the DPP, and that's the DPP's job to represent the Crown and Jamaica in criminal cases. But them farm out the work, because I don't feed them money. Them farm out the work, and they paid 33 million dollars, and then them said to me, we don't have any, in we, we can't tell you how much money we paid any Jamaican lawyer because no Jamaican lawyer went to the Privy Council. No Jamaican lawyer went to the Privy Council. Just to give an example of how beer fierce this government is. They must say to you, say, do not believe your lying eyes because all I want to see the DPP, the, the Privy Council, along with Jeremy, the deputy, who pay for them? The government pay for them. Taxpayers' dollars. They never pay them when you go to London. For those, sit down, sit down and, and argue. Just sit down and, and watch. But the government come back and, I mean, so beer fierce. And them come back and say, no, we never pay for anybody. So we have to show them the videotape and say, who are these two people? And who pay for these two people? But we have a lot more stories to tell you. But please, people, we'll talk more about ATI tonight. Please, and I have to get involved. You have to get involved. This is not about entertainment. This is about education. And so, we have to educate you, you have to educate us. You tell us, and in fact, people are coming forward now and giving us a lot of information. Because you know why? People trust us. Because as a uh, um, retired FBI agent, one of my primary duties, primary duties, protect people, protect information. So people know when they come to me and tell me something, they're not going to see it on the news yeah. Yeah. The, the next day. So, but we have lots more to talk about. But we'll don't pass on the mic. Because time is at a premium. And we want to get everybody involved. And again, it's supposed to be interactive. We want to hear from you. Because when I open up the phone line sometimes, I can only take one call at a time. And you may have 20 people who call, and I only can't take one. But in this forum, we can hear from all of you. We have a whole heap of time tonight. Thank you, Rati Yam, for that. Um, tonight, we want to do something a little bit different in terms of presenting um, certain information, right, in full view as it relates to, you can decide as it relates to the Prime Minister, um, the Prime Minister of Jamaica, right, fail to have his statutory declaration certified as it relates to 2021, 2022, and 2023. Now, the Prime Minister of, J of Jamaica is a billionaire. And we are going to prove it tonight. When we say that the Prime Minister of Jamaica is a billionaire, he is a billionaire. So I'm going to take the time, right, and show you vividly and make a comparison between Andrew Wallace's statutory declaration and Mark Golden statutory declaration. But I want you to follow me now, people. 
what we are going to do tonight is to show you history as it relates to Mark Golden political history and Andrew Olness political history. And I want you to listen to me. I know that members of parliament, right, and all of them are listening to us. So I'm going to say loud and clear, and any accountant in here tonight, we are going to do this together so that people see the evidence that we have nothing personal against Andrew Holness in saying to Andrew Holness that your statutory declaration cannot be certified for the obvious reason as it relates to $1.7 trillion being missing and as it, as it relates to SSL and we are bold, Hussein Bolt put his money into SSL and that money was missing. So we're going to present certain evidence tonight. First, um, I want to put on the screen as it relates to Mark Golden political history. You have that? Okay. Yes. What I want to show was Mark Golden political career. And when when we want some find that, you will see that Mark Golden political career have Mark Golden right involved in business businesses. Let us pluralize that. Prior to venture into the political realm. When you compare Andrew Ones, you'd have realized that Andrew Ones has no businesses prior to enter into politics. Andrew Ones is a career politician. <laughs> career politician. Are was a career thief? Yes. Well, I mean, obviously. Where Andrew Holness made a mistake was to give an interview as it relates to Cliff Hughes and where he spoke to the host Fitz Henley that he brought 47 million dollars into the politics. Right? As it relates to his business. Now, so people follow me. So then we check, right, on Wikipedia. And when we check on Wikipedia, if people have phone and have internet, I want people to just follow me, what I'm saying. When you check on Wikipedia, you will realize that Andrew Ones came into the politics in 1997. Now, when we investigate Prior to 1997, Andrew Oness has no business. You get what I'm saying, people? You following me? When we check, right, prior to 1997, Andrew Oness has no business. So then and there, we know that the interview that he did, right, with Fitz Henley, right, would have now proven as a lie. Now, I have a clip as it relates to Juliet Olness at an interview speaking about, his, speaking about her marriage with Andrew Olness. And what Juliet Olness said, Juliet Olness said specifically that in 1997, right, while they were getting married, they did not have any money. Now, people, I want you to follow me. Now. So what we are saying, what the wife said, go against what Andrew said, that he brought in $47 million into the politics. Right? All right. Here's someone mentioned that Exactly. Here's someone 
mentioned that he owed student loan. And indeed, we have that evidence that he owed student loan. So those were two factors that go in against Andrew Olness, right? Now, if we in Lonesome um, find that clip in terms of putting up Mark Golden's statutory declaration, and then we go to Andrew Olness' statutory declaration, we see something significantly wrong, right? So Mark Golden doing business prior to venture into politics, and when Mark Golden was doing businesses, doing his businesses, Andrew Olness was going to school. Andrew Olness was going to school. Mark Golden's statutory declaration, and I want people to follow me who have internet follow me. Mark Golden statutory declaration for 20, 2020, having Mark Golden total assets at $163 million. Now, Andrew Holness, statutory declaration for 2019, showing Andrew Holness statutory declaration at $171 million. Dollars, Jamaica, which simply mean that Mark Golden, who has business businesses, right, prior to Andrew Holness venturing to politics, Andrew Holness, who has no business, is now richer than Mark Golden. The question. Where did he get his money from? Now, bigger surprise than this. Bigger surprise than this. In 2022, right, while I was going through some of the, um, the gleaner footages, I realized that Juliet Olness took a lady who sold her a piece of lot at least flat. Right. Now, Juliet Owners said in court, impossible to fix her $800 million apartment will not be able to go any further as a result of a road, a piece of road. And, we, and, and if you look at my program, we see that Ratti and I, we show that right that um she was arguing about now when juliet owners started that project juliet owners started that project in 2012 i want people to remember this 2012 and when juliet owners started that project 2012 that project escalated in what it is in 2021 in court as 800 million Dollars. Now, people, I want you to, I want to ask this question. So then when I see that, I said, okay, something is wrong. Because Andrew Owens and Juliet Owens filed statutory declaration together. So then if Andrew Owens and Juliet Owens filed statutory declaration together, why Andrew Owens statutory declaration showing total assets, income, and liabilities to be $171 million. So then when I look at it, there is no reflection from our statutory declaration as it relates to the $800 million project at the current market value that she spoke about in court. Now, let us back up. Remember, I said that Juliet Owens started this project in 2012. Now, let me take people as it relates to Patrick Bailey, Andrew Owens lawyer. Now, before Andrew Owens purchased the, the land, 
right at Beverly Hills. Andrew Onless in 2011, right? Paid for the land. And I want people to follow me. The, the paper said Andrew Onless make four payments on the land. Four different transactions before you could have paid for the land. Simply means that Andrew Holness did not have total cash, right? To pay for the land. So he has to use four payments, right, to pay for the land. Now, remember now what happened in 2012. So then, in 2012, Bolt, Usain Bolt, put his money into SSL. I want people to follow me. Usain Bolt put his money into SSL. Now, so let us look now. Let us back up. 2011, Andrew Holness never have the total cash to pay for the land in one payment, use four transactions. Hussein Bolt put his money into SSL in 2012. The amount of money that Hussein Bolt put in um, SSL was actually about 37 um, um, million US dollars. Now, in 2012, Andrew Owens started his big mansion at Beverly Hills. I want people to follow me now. So when Andrew Holness, Bull put his money in SSL 2012, Andrew Holness started the house in 2012 and took four years, four years to complete a house that valued over $200 million. People, listen. 2011, four transactions were paid as it relates to the total cost of the land, right? And me said this, you know, this is Patrick Bailey saying this, Andrew Holness liar, right? And we have the evidence as it relates to the Gleaner, mainstream media. Not only the Gleaner alone carry that, other mainstream media carry that. So then let us ask the question, how did Andrew Holness was able, didn't have any didn't have the total cash in 2011, mm -hmm. right, to pay one time for the land. Mm -hmm. But in 2012, Bull put in the arm his money. Now, when we do deep dive investigation, right, we see a coverage that stated that immediately as Bolt put his money into SSL 2012, immediately it was taken out. Now, I am just putting the facts. I'm just gathering the facts together. So then in 2012, in 2012, Andrew Holness, all of a sudden, have some money, right? And was able to finish, right, his house in Beverly Hills that has according to the evaluator evaluated it and said the least it cost is $200 million. So then now, let us ask the question. At the time, remember that Andrew Owens said that most of the cash that he paid for the land came from SSL. He has returned on investment. I want people to follow me now, and I know that they are listening. Okay, return on investment. So then we understand why Andrew owned a statutory declaration prior to 2019 when you tell the Integrity Commission that, okay, you have return on investment from SSL. The Integrity Commission did not do any deep dive. And so then, of course, your statutory declaration, right? Leading up to 2019, 
were certified. Now, since social media now start to utter that on social media, Integrity Commission has to now take a deeper look and said, okay, we cannot certify, right, your 2021 statutory declaration, 2022 statutory declaration, and 2023 statutory declaration because these statutory declarations that you have submitted now affected previous statutory declaration that you have mentioned. So indirectly what the Integrity Commission is saying, that you lied. Wouldn't that be plain? That that is what the, that we can infer, right? We can suggest, we can perceive, right? That, okay, what the Integrity Commission is saying here, that you have lied to us. And so then a deeper dive takes the effect where Andrew Oness statutory declaration is concerned. So now when we look, not only that Andrew Holness was building a huge house that valued $200 million, we never know about Juliet Oness. Also, Andrew Holness found some money in 2012 and also, Juliet Oness found some money in 2012. Now, people, you see the coincidence? That Bull put in money 2012. And the information said that immediately as he put his money in 2012, it is missing. So, luckily, Andrew Oness gets some money in 2012, build big mansion, and then... Juliet Owens also gets some money in 2012. Think what we are saying. Okay. So then in 2021, I want people to follow me. SSL crashed. The shit touched the fan. So then since the shit touched the fan, I am asking Andrew Owens so come here a little bit. Let me ask you a question. Prior to your 2019 statutory declaration and everything that you told the Integrity Commission that you got return on investment in 2021 that now that SSL crash and we know now that SSL wasn't investing. Let me ask you a question, Andrew Ones. How did you get return on your investment from SSL? People, are you following me? Okay. How could you able to get return on your investment if SSL wasn't investing people's money. SSL was stealing people's money. Now, Nigel Clark had gotten the report from FSC. Because remember that Nigel Clark, what people don't understand and people that I'm going to tell people tonight, that Nigel Clark and Andrew Honest, right, are bench and body from way back when. That Nigel Clark, right, was also one of the president in Andrew Holness um, Foundation from way back when. So then when Nigel Clark see the report from FSC, one of the signature items that was on that report was to tell Nigel Clark that FSC was not investing people's money. They were stealing people's money. SSL, SSL was stealing. SSL. SSL. SSL was stealing people's money. My question, <clears throat> why 
Nigel Clark did not stop FSC, right, to continue. Not only that, when you investigate the report what FSC sent to Nigel Clark, SSL was giving loans, loans up to $7.5 million. Now, who did SSL give that loan to? Seriously. It is a very serious offense because SSL is a non-banking entity and is not authorized to give loans. I want people to follow us, you know. So when we come here, right, all of this platform here, speaking about Andrew Holness and people who are diarted Jamaica Labour Party, this has nothing to do with any diartedness. This has to do with checks, balance, transparency. And where you have a government that is unable, people, unable to have a statutory declaration for 2021, uncertified, 2022, uncertified, 2023, uncertified. Let me ask Jamaica electorate, are we going to accept that? That Andrew Owens must continue in government as our prime minister and without identifying the illicit aid. So if Jamaica or any member, any Jamaicans who decided to vote for Andrew Owens or any member of the Jamaica Labour Party, someone said, think again. Because if we can't identify the six, because we don't need to identify eight, we know two. We don't need to identify eight. We know two. And we know two because Juliet Holness and Andrew Holness filed together. And if Andrew Holness statutory declaration for 2021, 2022, 2023 cannot be certified, simply mean that Juliet Holness, nothing can be certified. Right? So then I want people to understand, be aware, be cognizant of what we are facing. Not only that Andrew Holness is saying to us that I am wrong and strong, but he expects for the Jamaica electorate to give him the third term. So I'm going to heal back and give another member right to speak. Good job, my brother. Good job, my brother. Well gone, family. Good job, my brother. Yes. People, there's so much to talk about. When we get on our page and we start talking, sometimes people say, I like what we are telling now. We even hear the information minister come out and say, we must, what we must watch. Like they are schooling us as to what we must watch. We hear the information minister said the other day that CVM is credible news. They do the Research. I don't know if you guys saw the video. Right? CVM is a credible news. You saw that? Yes, With the um, information minister. Yes. And when the poll came out, all of a sudden CVM not good again. <laughs> right? No, you cannot have it your way like this. You cannot toss the people like that and like that. We also hear, I know we don't know how many shelters we have in Jamaica. I bet Jamaica more shelter than Canada. You are bet Canada not having more shelter like Jamaica. You're mad. <laughs> so, Jamaica, Des McKenzie, Desmond McKenzie was saying on local station, we have over 60 something shelters. When Desmond McKenzie gets on CNN, we have over 870 shelters. Matthew Samuda go on CNN, he said we have 780. Some of the things that are mixed up the 870 and the 780, they, they mix up that up. Then the Prime Minister said we have 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're also going to show um, some of the shelter stuff. So, so, play it. <laughs> we're having a monitor. Good afternoon. I'm joined now by the Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who joined us live from Kingston. Prime Minister, thanks so much for your patience and for talking to us at what is a very busy time for you right now. Could you just tell us how prepared the island is and, and what, uh, what preparedness you're at at the moment? So we've got one days at its highest level of alert and preparedness. Although I think it is that I'm responsible for the devastation and emergency response of the pandemic. We have 900 shelters right across the island. Uh, I would say that about 90% of them are mobilized and ready. Uh, so from a government perspective, uh, the, government is ready. the government also engaged in an intensive informationalization campaign with our citizens for the last three or four days. So from a household level, the government and households have information about how to protect themselves, how to protect their property, and how to respond after the hurricane has passed. Uh, my own assessment is that every Jamaican is taking the necessary steps to protect themselves and their property and to be able to recover quickly after the, the hurricane. So I think the island is prepared, we are informed. Uh, right now, we have started to experience hurricane conditions. Um, but not yet severe, so we are still some way out, maybe three or four hours out from actually experiencing um, severe hurricane conditions. Uh, we are expecting that by virtue of the category of this hurricane, which is and, uh, projected now to be a uh, category 4, uh, and uh, which is you know, it could potentially go to category 3 still, like the dangerous hurricane, which would cause storm surges. Uh, heavy rain, potential destruction to postal infrastructure and the residential uh, and the commercial properties. And um, in the interior, we may very well experience uh, land cement. Uh, so we do have plans for that and we are prepared. So, Prime Minister, I don't mean to interrupt, but um, in terms of that preparedness, there will be a different policy for those that are living in urban areas to those that are living on the coastline. And how are you advising people who are living on the coastline that will have to move perhaps, would you say, to the interior? And what sort of numbers are we talking about? Well, we've identified all of our low lying areas, um, and that is essentially on the southeastern uh, coast of Jamaica, uh, where we would have potential significant damage. Uh, there are shelters in proximity to these areas. Uh, at high ground, and uh, we have implemented under our Disaster Risk Management Act an evacuation order. Once we have made the assessment and we have made some assessments, then we will uh, enforce those orders and uh, assist residents in relocating. Uh, but outside of that, for the last three or four days, we have been imploring residents, and some have responded and have moved on to. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, Jamaica is no stranger to hurricanes uh, of various levels historically. What lessons have we learned in the past that have actually... <laughs> so, um, as you can see right now, the Prime Minister is an Al Jazeera. That's Al Jazeera International News. Remember the Minister of um, Information said, when we talk, we must be, they must listen to certain news. Because when you talk, you amplify it, and people hear it all over the country and all over the world. It's fake news. So now, people, tell me if this is fake news. We are going to hear about a different figure of how many um, shelter we have. Evan Thompson, both with Jamaica's Ministry of Economic Work and Job Creation. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Senator Samira, I'll start with you, because you've been leading the market preparation. Oh, what are people and businesses in your country doing to prepare for this monster hurricane? Well, you know, there's a, a great deal of anxiety as we have seen the impact of this storm in Barbados in 
in St. Vincent and of course in Brea. So citizens and um, businesses alike have been looking into this all their curriculum preparatory steps. So there's a great deal of um, activity at the, the supermarkets, a great deal of activity at um, the stores. And people are putting in place um, the protection mechanisms that we know work. At the government level, we've been focused on carrying major grades right through our two townships. We've been ensuring that all of our government buildings are protected by the mortgage of ensuring that our roofs are secure. We're doing what we can, but ultimately we've also been focused on ensuring that citizens have the information. So those who are in low lying areas, those who are in flood prone areas, go to any of our 780 plus shelters because ultimately saving lives is our first priority. So now guys, after that you can hear, we don't know how much shelter we have enough. Can we hear Matthew Samuda come to something? Other people, the Prime Minister himself come to a different number. Now we're gonna hear um, Mr. Des Desmond Mackenzie. Local news. Local government minister Desmond McKenzie says 80% of shelters across the island are now activated. According to Mr. McKenzie, more than 53 shelters are now occupied. PR stunt. The residents of Port Royal to evacuate the area. Transportation will be provided for residents to the shelter at the National Arena. And Prime Minister Andrew Hollis is again calling on Jamaicans living in flood prone areas to retreat. At the same time, he's a Peter. Um, I know most Jamaicans would have taken the. Well, but coming out of your briefing, what? Uh, close to now some 60 odd shelters. Um, my information. Stop, Vessel. So, hold on there. We lose some. Do you have the next one? What the master we have? Um, 870. You played already? So we have two, two, this brother right here, so. Him say we have 60 yard and local channel. You saw them play with? When you go up on CNN now, the 60 yard reached to 870. Tell me how you make this, that mistake. How you make that but mistake? The, when you go up on CNN, it's 870. Yes, when you go on local channel, it's 60 yard. Matthew said 780 and, and CNN. Mr. Andrew Ones and Al Jazeera said 900. The last no. time when I checked, California is one of the richest states in the United States and it have the most homeless people with 660 shelter. Florida, 77. When you add them combined, California and Florida, Jamaica beat them. Yes. But, but, but Carlos, Carlos, yes. Can you imagine California with around um, 40 million people? Jamaica have 2.8 million people. You know. Now we have 900 shelter. Yeah. But what and you them? put you put in car school them use, you know. A bus shelter them have, you know. A shell. A bus shelter, brother. A shell, not shelter. Shell, <laughs> shell, <laughs> not shelter. Hold on, Carlos. Give me a little talk. Yes. One little talk, then. Just don't raise a point, then. That was not a mistake, you know. That was no. not a mistake. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because you have dark shelter. Yes. You have bus shelter, yes. you have what, chicken shelter, what Ooh, chicken. kind of shelter, right? Here's a question nobody asks the Prime Minister. Are those shelters hurricane certified and hurricane proof? Nobody asks him that. Because guess what happened? The National Arena is not a certified hurricane proof shelter. The schools, in fact, Man of the Wilderness put up a video the other day. What to cry, shame. Is a school them call a shelter. You know, we are protect the children them from the elements. Some decorative bricks. Now, most people killed in a hurricane killed because of debris flying around because of the wind. And you can just imagine if a, hurri a, for a category four or five hurricane comes through that school. That all of them decorative bricks there, eh, they become missiles. All them people inside of the classroom they're dead. All them dead. But we're going to yield back to Carlos because this burial thing here, we're going to talk about our illustrious finance minister and the financing we do to ensure Jamaica. We're going to go through that. Carlos. Thank you, Will Ratigan. Now, people, we know you guys are family of Jamaica. We're losing roof. We're suffering, right? If they lose them roof, 
When you know somebody will lose them roof, even a neighbor, a friend. My roof never gone, me safe, but my neighbor, him roof gone. My next neighbor, she spent the night during a hurricane at my yard. Now, while we we're talking about preparedness, people, we realize that a lie they might tell. I'm going to read something for you right now, real quick. A police sent this to me today. There's a police sent this news article from the Observer to me. A Jamaica, can I feel it? I'm going to read to you guys. Nothing but PR sons and lies, people. What they are paying PR and labor, right? You know, help me. If we have a problem, we have a problem as a country. Tell me the truth and we work together to fix it. Don't tell me no lie like everything's okay. Look on this lie that them tell me. The hurricane blew on the 3rd, right, of July. On the 8th of July, JPS came out in the paper, said 83% of the public in Jamaica of electricity. 83%. Five days. Listen to me, good guys. In five days after the hurricane, JP said they had 83% of Jamaica up and running, which is on the 8th. On the 10th, the PM said we have 84%. So the PM are pushing down the, down, the more, down the road. So now, if that is true, why are we trying to get overseas help? And listen to me, Jamaican. I would say yes, big up JPS, if five days after the hur uh, hurricane we have 83% of the country back on with electricity. I would applaud them. That's a great job, don't it? Five days after, 83% of the island, my brother. Wouldn't that be a good job? Well, no, well, Carlos, Carlos, them go, Dowell Falls, <laughs> come and say 96%. Yeah, we hear 96%. That. No, it might cost the JPS. Yeah. The man I throw the JPS under the bus. I mean, no, say if you're the minister and you come tell us a 96% at time for your pocket, you're back and leave. You know, blame everybody else, but not blame yourself. Yes. It never worked like that. Yes. True. It back to yes. Carlos. True. Yeah, well, people, you know, say we talk all the about subject. We have so much thing that we have to talk, but we have to stick to what we're faced with right and now, the recovery. A burial car is serious, people. I even know where I do, we have all type of disease broke out in Jamaica. They're not business people. I believe, says such man, you know, Mr. have the country and want it. I believe the Prime Minister have Jamaica where he want it right now. I believe the Prime Minister, it's called engineered hardship. You know, so, may I ask my question about him? He hears the JPS come out and send him and give him 20% discount to about 350,000 people. That's not enough. We want to know how JPS prepare to face the next hurricane. More often know what JPS is doing, what actually has taken for this to happen again. Texas, because I'm mean, doing the stories, if you guys follow me, you know, so we got my teeth in a JPS neck. So maybe showing them Texas, one um, category one um, hurricane, but when Beryl reached at Texas, it was category one. The people them out of, um, for one week, them out of electricity. The governor is asking for action. What they might do so this not happen again? They mean stuff on the desk is not 20% discount of a good that's hug and good. We, the Jamaican people, are asking about this. How JPS can prevent this again? They said they prepare and they're ready for this and after. Up till now, nobody go to my community. My community have never I've not seen anybody. How many people here? So nobody come to your community. Put up your hand. How many of your people call back from France and don't come to my yard yet? They have not visited my community. Nobody. Up till today, may ask. They not care. So let me read something what a policeman said to me today. Real quick, and then I yield back over to these gentlemen. Cops crippled. And this is from the Observer. Cross Keys Asia Police Station have no communication by radio or phone. Police station. You want to say they could, they could get them one plant to look at Delco? Yeah. Police station have a Delco, no engine. We spend the most. Financial superpower of the Caribbean. Nothing but PR stunt and lies. Cross Keys Manchester residents in South Manchester and personnel at Cross Keys and Asia Police Station in that section of the parish are facing a security crisis as they remain without telecommunication services Three weeks after the passage of Hurricane Beryl, police station, you know, a credible source told the Observer on Thursday that the police are appealing for assistance as they are as theft exposed them with, as they have left exposed with no form of communication by radio or telephone. Police are exposed. 
Even, so the phones and radio are not working at the stations. We have no form of communication with them. If they even come under attack, we don't even know. People calling the station and the phone call, not going through. There is no water and police living at the barracks cannot iron their clothes because electrical power is still out, the source said. Tell me, say we couldn't buy one local electrical plant, get them. Yes. We and Chinese are friends. Yes. friends. Tell me what, what the benefit is. Is just one way the benefit I go? Yes. Kind of like we are using Chinese them. We don't have no solar panel. We don't have many things in Jamaica. How come you tell me say, this, this, um, the police station are not fitted with generators? Police station are all out. Kraski's residence says there are more break-ins with electricity out. Former Minister of National Security and Opposition Leader, Senator Peter Bunting on Thursday, appealed for help for the police station. No light, radio or telephone communication. They transferred they transfer the prisoners from Asia to Mandeville. Look at people, you know, so Jamaica, where the small island. But we're not poor. They want to be so poor, we can't afford it. If we're the poor, who can afford 300% raise? The highest paid politicians in the world, we're poor there. We're not poor. It's poorly run. So Bunting told the, the, the Jamaica Observer, unlike Alligator Pan, neither of these stations in Asia are cross keys of a generator. Tell me so we spend the most, people. Who care about us? A generator, you know? A generator, you know, people? And we are Chinese, our friend. Chinese make all of them think they could have get cheap. Tell me so we... One way the benefit I go, I will lead back to China. So they don't have no generator. So one of the things I would make a call on is for the Ministry of National Security to immediately ensure that generator is provided at these stations, he said. Nobody shouldn't beg the government. Remember, so the government, they said they're prepared, you know. We just watch the videos, right? They were prepared, right? They are responsible for the police who are first responders. Especially in these deep rural communities, they must get generators to those stations today. They cannot wait no longer. It is three weeks now. Most of the islands was not affected or seriously or this time they could easily um, redeploy generators from other locations to the assistant in Cross Key. So people, it's in the observer. It go on and go on and it's sad people to see with police. If the police don't have the generator, what about we? We're dead, we're not the dark already, you know? Who are we gonna call? We are already dead in the dark, who are we gonna call? Ghostbuster. <laughs> Ghostbuster. <laughs> so, 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 so people, it's bad. They might treat it like a hog and goat, guys. We're tired of that. We're tired of that. We're tired of that. Whether are PNP and labor right, put that aside at this moment. Jamaica need one voice for the better men, for the youth them. So as President say, let's invest our time and resources for the future of Jamaica people. Something call us off a chat. But make a deal with this. this. This is bad right now. If we're not careful, criminal kill out your family down there. Them not no light. It's dangerous when they have light in Jamaica. No, you're on the light. Remember, JPS told us five days after that 83% of Jamaica is with electricity. So that was a lie. Is the government going to punish JPS? Is the government going to punish JPS for this? Let me ask you, is the 20% discount is enough? No. JPS must be held accountable. But then again, it's always looked like our politicians in a JPS and them company are pocket. They are not serving us people. Whether PNP or Labour right, when them going down the wrong, we could turn up the fire upon them. Yeah? It's benefit us when we speak up. Yeah? That's what we are doing here, people, for the next generation. So we're going to continue to be the voice for the voiceless. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Yes. Now you're past Dr. Very Rupert. Simple. But Dr. Rupert, before you, before you say a thing, right? We can just play this with Andrew Onis. And we can just play this with a year. With a young lady in a very same way, people. And this is this how Andrew, Andrew talked to the lady. Remember, I think mash up and everything, you know. But look, look, look what the Prime Minister said to her. Let's watch this. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, she had telling about the mental illness and it's real, right? She have a, a, a daughter and if I move from bunks from place to place and everything, hear him response to her. Just listen. <laughs> Talk about the hurricane. A hurricane barely listen. You, know. you said the prime minister tell her to take her own charge and her own destiny and her future and her own hand. This, this, so uh, this, this is one of the Lord in a This is unbelievable. Eh? She need. Remember, him, 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 him collect money and him get much money. Him get by now. How much money him get? Him get. Him get two point eight million from US from the embassy plus plus two hundred pound came man. The US, you know. 16, yeah, that's from the insurance thing. Yeah. And, thing and then he might tell the lady to take care of her own destiny. Yeah. Eh? When she can't, she can't, remember, you know, have nothing, you know. You have bunk some place to place, and this is the prime minister tell you, say, better when you take care of your own destiny. And you know, different by nobody for nothing. But hey. he might collect it. And he might give it out. Chop it, chop it. Hey, he might chop it. No, man, this, this bad man. Yes, sir, Give me no, a, give me, you, you know the funny thing about it? The funny thing about it is that this is, and when I say funny, I mean ha ha, because funny is serious. This is a disaster. It's a catastrophic uh, situation. In fact, the Prime Minister declared the island a disaster because of burial. And you think he would have come with some empathy, some sympathy for the people who have suffered. And hear the message him said to her. He said to her, you must take your destiny in your own hands. And. Don't have unreasonable expectations for the government. Now, what would be unreasonable for them to say, look, we need you to get us back to where we were before the hurricane? This is not a... a beg your pardon? Exactly. You're right. This is not a good message. It's not good optics. And this is not good governance. And so people, I hope that the people in St. Elizabeth, and we have people, we have family live at St. Elizabeth, who greatly affected... By this. Oh, you know what? Give me, a, just give me a chance to say something before we come to Dr. Francis there. Let me just make it abundantly clear that I have never said do not send support to people in Jamaica. I have never said that. There you go. Because there's a rumor going around and I've seen it where somebody said to somebody who has a charity and is sending stuff to Jamaica but cannot get the support, say, Ratigan is the reason behind this because him said we're not to send nothing to Jamaica. Let me repeat what I've said. Do not send a dime to the government of Jamaica. Not a dime to the government of Jamaica. I agree. Right? You have family in Jamaica who will suffer, send the money directly to your family members. Them have money, Graham. Them have, oh, the next one... Um, Western Union and so on and so forth. 
if you have supplies, send it. Them have a grace period now where you don't have to pay tariffs and duties and send it to your family members. If you can't, if you don't have family members and you still want you want to help out people of Jamaica, there are charitable organizations there. There you go. So what I'm uh, what I've said is send the money to charity, churches, and have them do the delivery, or send it to your family members. How can you trust the government with your money? And see Herb Nelson here and Dr. Francis as my witness. In 2020, I believe it was 2020, the Northeast region, they had a telethon and they collected, gentlemen, correct me if I'm wrong, they, correct, they collected more than 400,000 US dollars. And to date, nobody knows where that money is. Despite the fact that they have written letters to several ministries to say, please explain where the money is, where, how was it spent, who benefited, they have not gotten a response. How can you trust your hard-earned dollars now with this government? When you have a government, one point, and by the way, I know me say it, not my words, not, not my words. <laughs> These words came from the Auditor General of Jamaica. The Auditor General says 1.7 trillion, trillion, not million, not billion, trillion Jamaican dollars unaccounted for. Unaccounted for. How can you give this, this government your money when you have them paying for buildings that they don't occupy and they're paying rent in the amount of hundreds of millions of dollars? When you have a health ministry, 700 billion, they can't account for it. When you have a health ministry that says we're going to spend 2 billion on Cornwall Regional, now it's up to 20 something billion and climbing. And climbing. And then you go and take your hard-earned money and give to this government. Them can't manage all of them money. They better, no. They have mismanaged all of that money. What do you think they're going to do with your money? And that's why I stand firm. And I will continue to stand firm to say, people, if there's an earthquake, if there's any kind of natural disaster, do not send your money to this government. We know about this one. <clears throat> we don't know about what's coming. We, and what's, what's, what, what's gone, we don't care, but we can't do anything. This is the government we are dealing with, and I'm saying to you, do not send them a dime. Not even a dime, people. Not even a dime, because that money you give to them, you give to them will not be spent appropriately. People going to still suffer. Them get 16 point something million dollars already from the Caribbean. Them get 2.5, I think, from the UN, 2 point something from the US, 200 from uh, the Cayman. Them get money from China. God knows where else them get the money. And now I see where them say, why them don't have them, them don't have enough money, so they're going to have to cut back in terms of the assistance where they're providing in the event that they have another hurricane. You now, why we have all of this hurricane bond? Why we have insurance? So again, let me say it for those who have ears to hear. Do not send your money to the government of Jamaica. Send it to your family members or send it through a charity. Thank you. All right, before we go further, I'm um, bring up Dr. Francis here. I have something to say, guys, real quick. Now, you see, all of these people right here, you guys, you see, if we did there Jamaica, some of this wouldn't bother me, you know? Some of this would not bother us. It's because we fly out. We're wiser, smarter, more intelligent. We know we're having a bird eye view. We come to different places where we see politicians get God jail for stuff for them do. We come to different places where we see nobody in a harbor, no criminal in the office, don't it? Some of us Jamaica will go out there with the Canadian people, American people, British people, and go protest against crooked politicians and Jamaica will come from. So why should we accept that from Jamaica? I said it many times on my platform. Maybe if I was in Jamaica, I'd be doing the same thing with Jamaican people might do. Look for a piece of food for them, try to hustle politicians. Me not busy with nothing, me not care about nothing. People, the, the best thing that could happen to Jamaica is for those of us who come from it, who fly out, now we're having a bird eye view and really mean the country good. That's why you get this out of us. But if we did that yard, I'll miss the sensation that probably looks in for a politician for Niam. Me too. Hustle everybody. And I lie. Talk truth. Which one are you willing to sell out on the vote? Which one are you willing to sell out the vote of person? We're not hungry no more. We're not sell the vote for some chicken and some fertilizer. We're not do it. Right? So now what we are doing have better meaning. So we, without further ado, we are bringing down Dr. Francis, the old bull. Respect that process. <laughs>
Well, I'm indeed a whole world. Give me a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Why, until I come here tonight, I didn't know that more people can chat more than me. Prezi chat more than me. Mystic chat more than me. Ratty chat more than me. And yes, Carlos, you chat more than me. My God. Ladies and gentlemen, there's one good thing, Carlos, you know. We are to be blamed as much as the people in Jamaica. Tom drunk, but Tom no fool. And if a prime minister gets up and tells you that um, you have to take matters in your own hands after a hurricane, run as far as you can from him because he's dangerous. Because it is why, you know, listen to me carefully here. We Beryl, if Beryl is a woman and I met her and 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 and, and then they tell me she should come in five days, I gone. So I'm telling you, if I hear certain people coming, I gone. Because the fact of the matter is when I saw what they were giving out, and I'm gonna to go to my point in a minute, they brought it to the people in the areas in a plastic bag that everybody can see it, and they make them sign for it, and they fool fool people, then go sign for it. And we know, we don't know what's in that plastic bag, but we know it can't last very long. So ladies and gentlemen, where is the anger? Where is the uproar? Where are the, you know, who do we tell in Jamaica, oh no, go on with foolishness? You cannot allow, I don't, I've never seen a tail wagging a dog. And this is what is happening in our beautiful country today we deserve better we deserve better as a people and let me make it quite clear jamaica has never been prepared for a hurricane why do i say this i'm in the military and you have military personnel uh, i think approximately seven thousand now or maybe about that more and you have the police, and you have the fire, and what have you. And when they went to these people, and I'm ex-military, you know, there were nobody there to serve anybody, give them a water, give them nothing, and most of the places were blown off, the zinc gone of all these people. So ladies and gentlemen, we know all this. So if the same person come, remember, you know, Tom drunk, but Tom no fool, you know. And if the same person come and tell you to go back to that place, would you do it? So it is for us in this room to spread the word that we are not going to take it anymore. We are not going to take it anymore because this is Jamaica. You say something about Jamaica and they say you're going to destroy brand Jamaica. That's ridiculous. Who is destroying brand Jamaica? Whoever is down there is destroying brand Jamaica. We send our monies now, listen to this, and this one might be tough, to some worthless boy down there, I work too, or whatever. And we send the money, and we know they're not going to do anything good with it. You have to change. I decided this evening to talk about education of Jamaica. Many governments have not educated us and educated the young people. Why have they not done so? Because they want to abuse us. They want, they want us to read. They want us to name our name Pambula. You understand? We have to be educated. We have to get our children educated. We have to get the population sensitized. And we have to take care of those young people so that they can not get themselves in trouble. Why am I saying this? Because I too was a barefoot boy. I too never know shoes. Yes, that's all you're going to say. It's like a doctor, a captain. No, it was true. But it was by the grace of God which we have forgotten. In our island, we have forgotten God. I am telling you. And as a result of that, money and mammon has become more important than people. And we cannot allow that. And that is why we, and I don't know about others, I, well, I know about a few others, are on this campaign because we want to make sure that the least what we call the least among us is looked after, taken care of. 
There was an old lady who came out in the storm and she, was, she had dementia. And she didn't know where she was. And of course she was washed away. There was a young man playing a football and the football and the boy go after the football. You understand me? We have to sensitize our people. We have to educate our people. We have to stop making them listen to lies. And we have to make them get rid of this thing called die hard. Die hard. Imagine people call people die hard. That means you're dead and you're hard again. You understand me? We have to get serious and take the destiny of our country in our hands. Foreigners have come and taken over Jamaica. You have land in Jamaica. You can develop the land. You can do what you want. And you can work with each other. You know one of the biggest problems we have is working with each other. Do you know that? You say, but see the boy, he look like him boasting. No. Remember Tom drunk no fool, but him no fool. We need to come together as a nation. And it begins in these protests. It begins in the very room. We have to bring back people to the old days when the village raised the child. We have to do that. That's why I'm here today. And I am know that my colleagues are sincere about it. Of course, they, are more, they have more facts about certain things than I do. And I represent and see all of them though. And I am telling you tonight, spread the news. Let everyone know that is important to make sure that you take care of la Jamaica land we love. Let me tell you something. There are many nations who would like to be Jamaicans, but they can't. They can't speak like us because we know how to cuss you, turn you upside down and round and round and round. And for those of you who are thinking that I don't know how to cuss people, learn again. I remember a lady came up to me one time and the woman cussed me dog rotten. And I listened quietly, and then I opened my mouth, and she said, Jesus Christ, you lift up your frack now? He said, yes. He said, yes. Me naked now, you can kiss me ass. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, just, I'm just warning you, don't try to cuss me. I'm very good at it, but I don't expose it. So all I'm saying is, you have to play Brother Tukuman and, and all that sort of thing. You have to get smart. If the, if the, if the politician come and give you money, take it. But name him out and vote him out. Take it. Right? Don't, because him not get it from anywhere good, you know. But you get it from him good. So ladies and gentlemen, as I say before, education and believing in the man up above or the woman, whatever, up above, you know, the man, because they might get in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, we must believe in something or we will stand up for nothing. So I'm here this evening to let you know that I am very, very lucky. And we are all very fortunate to be here this evening. And I'm thankful for where I am today because I have a mother. And let me tell you something. I have to bow and, and, and scrape to women. Yes, women. I'm not trying to brown nose you. I'm telling you the truth because my mother said, I brought you in this world and I will take you the hell out. And she was five foot two and I believed her. And here I am today from a orchard. Anybody from orchard in here? All right, good. Give him a round of applause. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Well, everybody from Jamaica, you can raise your hand. Don't matter, I, don't, I don't want to be. But let me make it quite clear. And she told me that. And I believed her. And I studied. And I still didn't do very, I mean, you know, I did very, fairly well going on. And I'm here today. Every Jamaican child, everyone, no matter where they come from, no matter what they look like, what their color is, and they must stop bleaching too. Damn foolishness. No matter what it is, they can become somebody. They can be the next prime minister. They can be, I know, and this is the one story I'm going to close with, with on this one, about education. There is an area in Jamaica that was absolutely volatile. 
And as a, the chairman of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force, which Mr. Rattigan is, Will is, and also Herb, we had people go into a region that was volatile. Every day them kill somebody or, or, or murder somebody. And I can tell you, we have been in there for four years. Four years. And there have been no more murders. Because we spoke to the community. We got the children to decide who they want to be. And most importantly, they want to be Jamaicans. Let me tell you why people envy us. We run faster than anybody else in the world. We have the best coffee in the world so that Japan come and buy it out. We have the, oh yes, you can shake your body better than anybody else in the world. You have the best rum in the world. Right? You have the best beaches in the world. Let me make it quite clear. I could continue and I could go on and on and on. And they say we do not love Jamaica. Where them come from? We love Jamaica. That's why we are doing what we do. And I encourage you tonight to do that and also praise it on. Thank you very much. One love, one heart, one destiny. Marcus Mosiah Garvey.